La zona di operazione della ricerca Search and rescue teams are being briefed ahead of a training mission to retrieve a person adrift in the Mediterranean. Fly's cameras are with them to follow the operation from start to finish. Pratica di Mari is the largest Italian Air Force base. It's the headquarters of 15th Wing, specialists in search and rescue. The crews are highly trained to carry out operations on land or at sea. To perform successful search and rescue missions, the helicopter must be an eye in the sky, and the aircraft is fitted with technology to help locate the target. Initially, the crew set off with geographical coordinates, an approximate location of where the missing are supposed to be. The aircraft systems, coupled with GPS, then focuses on the correct area, improving the chances of locating the missing in quick time. In the cabin of the Augusta Sikorsky HH-3F helicopter, the crew prepare for the rescue proper. A dinghy is spotted. A diver then prepares to take to the water. It's a delicate moment as the crew prepare to winch the survivor on board. And it's mission accomplished. The mission of 15 Wing is to search and rescue pilots and military personnel lost behind enemy lines. But in times of peace, we are here to help the civilian population. Per a favore della popolazione civile. Dal 1965 oggi. Since 1965, the wing has saved more than 7,000 individuals. This shows the commitment of the wing and the air force, and it's a daily commitment. L'aeronautica militare, anche attraverso il quindicesimo stormo, sostiene tutti i giorni. On board we have a Doppler radar navigation system coupled with a GPS which allows us to navigate accurately towards the location of the survivor. We have a new recently developed system which, along with military radios, takes the GPS coordinates of the survivor, puts them in our navigation system and gives us the exact distance and direction to find them. This is the near future. Once Galileo, the global navigation satellite system built by the European Space Agency, is up and running, search and rescue missions will become ever more accurate. The distress message of, say, a boat in trouble can make direct contact with one of the satellites in the constellation. The satellite replies with a signal to the boat, Stay calm, we have received your message. At the same time, the satellite sends the boat's coordinates to the rescue center then the helicopter can take to the air, knowing exactly in which area to search, saving precious time. However, in some respects, the future is already here. In commercial aviation, for example, European and international projects developed recently allows commercial aircraft to navigate using satellite technology. Today it's GPS, tomorrow it's Galileo signals, or both. We're in the cockpit of an Air Berlin Boeing 737 to see a GLS or Global Navigation Approach and Landing. We're off to sunny Spain, to Malaga, aided by space technology.
Ameline aircrafts are equipped with uh, GLS since June 2007. GLS integrates uh, satellite and ground-based uh, navigation information and provides extremely accurate and stable navigation information for approach and landing. To date, precision approaches and landing are only performed using ground assistance. Mainly the ILS, the Instrument Landing System, a reliable but expensive technology, which is high maintenance for the airports, in order to keep it accurate. Compared to an ILS, GLS information are very smooth and steady. Okay, now we have the identification Tango Sierra Tango Bravo of the GLS approach for runway 31 and we also have the identification for the runway. Our aircraft is already in contact with air traffic control at our destination. Malaga is one of the first European airports to test the global landing system within an international framework called Ground-Based Augmentation System backed by European institutions. To enable aircraft to perform a safe satellite landing, a ground station is installed close to the runway. It picks up signals from the air and augments them to improve accuracy. Then from the ground, the improved signals reach the aircraft and help landing in very low visibility. Usually the accuracy of a GPS, like the one in a car, is no more than 20 meters. With the ground-based augmentation system, the accuracy can reach 10 centimeters. Let's look a little closer to see how the system works. Why do we need to improve the GPS system? Because the GPS does not respect the necessary requirements for approach procedures at a Category 1 airport. GPS tells you where you are, but it can give you the wrong position. The system in Malaga receives a GPS signal. We have four antennas receiving coordinates. So antennas receive a message saying, according to GPS, you are at this point. The antennas know exactly where they are. Therefore, they can compare the GPS position with their own. Knowing this difference, thanks to calculations done in the GBAS station, we can transmit to the aircraft the corrections that their onboard computers must make to the received GPS system. In Europe, led by Eurocontrol, there is a group called LATO, which stands for Landing and Takeoff Group, where all countries with GBAS programs regularly meet. There is also an international GBAS working group. We are all working together in a global environment to achieve a speedy operational implementation of these new systems. The GBAS is not the only system assisting satellite approaches. Another European project is called EGNOS. It uses a continual communications network to augment satellite signals for navigational purposes. In both cases, the goal is the same, to allow aircraft to perform safe and happy landings wherever they are.